How would the panel survive with no income and no savings and a six-week wait for state support? Uh, right, that's of course... <laughs> A reference to the introduction of universal credit, which has been very much in the news and being talked about in Parliament. Um, Simon Wilson, how would you survive with no income, no savings, and a six-week wait for state support? Yeah, I mean, it, I, I can't imagine how difficult that would be. Um, and I think, whilst universal credit in principle is a, is a great idea, the idea that you go to one place, that you don't have to fill out millions of forms in millions of different places, simplifying the whole process is completely the right policy. But this idea that people have got to wait six weeks to get paid must be wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because what does it cost the government to pay people, rather than pay people in arrears, what would it cost the government to pay them in advance? And the answer is, well, they'd have to borrow a month, that, that month of money. Now, the person, the body that can borrow by far the cheapest in this country is the government. It can borrow at less than a quarter of a percent on overnight money. Those people who are who are in that position, they will have to go to the very, very most expensive um, lenders. They will be borrowing at rates of 40, 50 percent. So it is insane for the government not to be the borrower rather than the receiver of benefits. Well, and he's a, and he's a, he's a conservative supporter and a conservative funder. What do you say to him? I mean, let alone all the people who are having difficulty with universal. So let's benefits. explain what the universal credit is designed to do. He's this explained that. Okay. He just right. says you could borrow the money and get out of the problem. No, well, let me explain what it's designed to do. It's designed to enable people to move into sometimes part-time work, moving on to full-time work, to have a change of circumstance where when they're in the system, they don't have to keep logging back in, logging back on, reclaiming. It's also designed to end the situation where uh, somebody's working part-time, 16 hours a week. Uh, sorry, um, Chris, I'm going to interrupt you. Okay. No, because well, everybody knows this. It's been said over and over again. Okay. The uh, question that David McNess yeah. asks uh, is about the six-week wait okay. before it, money comes through. But I think it's, don't, it's, don't bother about why it's there. Okay. Everybody's agreed. Even Labour agrees on the idea. Okay. It is just, <laughs> just go to the, the, go the, to, go to the six-week. The point I was trying to make is that it's designed to replicate your experience in a job receiving benefits back in a job so you actually have a steady flow uh, as you move into benefits as you move back into part-time work now i don't want anyone to have no money for six weeks and we have a system in place that money is available for advanced payments for people who need it immediately if necessary that's the right thing to do One this is a system wait longer than this, six weeks this is a system that's so far it's a huge reform it's so far been applied to eight percent of benefit claimants um, we're rolling it out very gradually we're learning lessons to make sure things work. When things don't work as well as they should, we're making changes. That's the right thing to do. Uh, we Hold on, wait a second. Just say that again. I'm saying to uh, Mr. Graylin, the, uh, the Tory party, uh, the majority of them yesterday, they abstained in the House on the vote to, uh, to give a, a, a buffer period over the, to look into what is going wrong with this, and they abstained. That has left the people that are suffering disgusting, disgusted. So, so yesterday's vote was to pause the reform. Now, the reform is a positive. It's having a positive effect. More people are getting into work from the universal credit. No. There was the case no. from conventional benefits. No, 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 no. We're no, making no, changs no, as it no. goes through. We've, we've improved the situation with advanced payments. So why do we will you continue on why do making you changes why to try and ensure that what House, is a like positive the reform asked you does the right thing to people. This. Hold on, I'll come back to you. Lisa and Andy, let's hear from Labour. It is just not true to say that the government is learning lessons from the rollout of this pilot. And the reason... The reason I know that is because it was piloted first in Wigan, where I live, in 2013. And at the end of that pilot, 80% of people were in rent arrears, three times as much debt as people who hadn't been in this scheme who were also in arrears. So it is not true to say that the government is learning lessons, and it is not true to say that the government isn't aware of the scale of human misery that the chaotic rollout of this programme has already caused. And yesterday they were given an opportunity to work with us, to pause this scheme and work with us to fix it so that it could benefit people and not cause that real hardship. And not only did they refuse to do that, 
but they didn't even bother to turn up to defend their policy. If my constituents didn't turn up, they would be sanctioned and go without money and anything to eat for a significant amount of time. And yet that is precisely what the Tory party, who are implementing this policy, did yesterday. If there was ever a sign that this group of people is not fit to hold office in this country, this is it. Lisa? The, sorry, just uh, can I, the, 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 the man there and, and, uh, and uh, Lisa says, you failed to turn up to vote. And even the Speaker of the House of Commons, rather extraordinarily, said that the government should show respect to Parliament and say what it intends to do. Why did you abstain? Why the, were you not there? The government was there. We had ministers speaking in the debate. We had backbenchers speaking in the debate. Simply choosing not to vote against a Labour Opposition Day motion, which is not a binding motion, does not mean we failed to turn up. It was worse than that. There was a three-line whip for you to abstain. They were so didn't want to vote that they told people they had to abstain. And three-line whip's a bit of an arcane term that we know. But I just find that is quite extraordinary. And it just demonstrates that the government do not know what they are doing. They should have stopped the pilots that came in. The principles were right. Simon's right. The principles about simplifying the benefits procedure was spot on. But as the pilots started, it became clear there were problems. And then worse than that, in 2015, the new Conservative government then started to make cuts to universal credit that have made things much, right. much right. worse. Right. Lisa Andy, what do you make of what um, Simon Wilson said, that the government should borrow the money and simply pay people to get over this six-week pause? Well, that, Is the, that Labour policy look, too? A, Sorry, a, I was saying, I was saying right. that they should pay, pay it in advance rather yes. than arrears. So the government, yes. the government says that you can get well, borrow advance... borrow to do that. Yeah. The government yeah. says that you can get advance payments, but I was sitting in my constituency office in Wigan today discussing this with my staff. We have had so many of these cases over the last few years and they do not tell you about the advance payments, so nobody knows. So people aren't getting what they need, they're being told that they have to wait six weeks for the money, although one in four are waiting longer because the government can't get its act together. But it's worse than that too. What we found in the pilot in Wigan is that many people didn't have bank accounts, so they needed time to get up to speed with that. Many other people weren't online and didn't have access to the internet, in part because the government has cut and cut and cut, so they don't have access to those very basic rights that they need in order to participate in the scheme. And the government says that people wait six weeks in order to get their first pay packet in work but the truth is that for people who earn the least in this country usually a, a significant minority of those people are paid weekly not six right. weekly so it is just simply not true okay i'll come to i'll come i'll come to those of you with your hands up in just a moment richard coles what's it like to be um, skint and then to go six weeks without any uh, benefit at all well it's it's grim and it's also catastrophic i think it's grim we see this in uh, numbers where i have people visiting the food bank not just people actually out of work some people in work visiting food banks discuss but i think the catastrophic thing is more and more people are getting into rent arrears and what concerns me is that a six-week gap in income can create rent arrears to the extent that you face the reality of eviction nothing seems to me to fray the fabric of a community or to uh, to undermine the cohesiveness of community than insecure housing and that's something which i think is a major major problem it's harder and harder to access social housing because there aren't resources going into it but when you get into rent arrears then you're really really in trouble okay um, you sir in the front the government has had four years of trying to get this problem sorted why hasn't it come up with an answer Chris four Grady. years of doing basically nothing yeah. well we've you've been, still got major problems we've been introducing this very quite calmly small a bit at a time 8% of people now claiming the benefits. You should, so this is a gradual transition. Years, so, we though, learn, so that we learn the lessons and we make changes, which we've been doing with advanced payments, for example, uh, making sure that people who really need money can get it on the day. That's what we've been doing to deal with what is a huge reform and try to make sure that people you don't shouldn't spend have six a weeks problem without money. After four years of supposedly putting it correctly in position. So, Simon Wilson. This talk about advanced payments, does that answer your question? No, I, I, think, I think 
everyone, I think, benefits should be paid in advance rather than in arrears. As I say, why make people who are... Who but are you say you're already well, doing that, if, are you? If, if you pay a benefit all the time in advance, when somebody gets into work and they're paid in arrears, then they have a huge gap. You're looking non-plus. You, if somebody comes to work for you, Simon, somebody, you pay them at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. If we're paying them at the start of the previous month, they have two months before their pay packet. No. They do? No, no the problem actually, and the, I'm sure the reason it's paid in arrears, and the problem is that actually they get paid at the beginning of the month and then a week later they get a, a, a job. And so actually th they end up being overpaid. That is the but, risk of but, paying But you pay advance. people in arrears, don't you? Mm? You pay people in arrears, don't you? We do, absolutely. And, and one so of the therefore if the state doesn't do that, it creates a problem with people moving back into work. Oh, but Chris, no, it that, completely that's just not ignores right. the human no, no, reality of what is happening just, to people. You know, the just, question was how do you survive for right. six weeks without any money? And the truth is that you beg and you borrow from family and friends if you're lucky enough to have them you are humiliated and you are hungry and at the end of it you are tired and you are angry right. and we shouldn't be doing that the, to people in this country the person over there in the third row thank you yes, yes. The person in the pale jacket yes the contempt that the tories have for the poor is just absolutely disgusting people are struggling <laughs> People are struggling as it is with all the cuts, with the social care, with NHS, with uh, working conditions, zero hour contracts. And again, the fantasy world of the Tories, it's okay. We're doing it calmly. We're doing it la di da it's fine. Are you in favour of universal benefit in principle? In principle, it works. It is actually better. It's more cost effective. People know what they're getting. It's an introduction into work, etc. But for the Tory MPs to blatantly state that this is an incentive into work and we are helping you and then they can't even do what they're supposed to do in their job and vote. Okay. And this okay. is what is so okay, disgusting and a contempt for the poor. Yes, there was well, so, well, so voice well, on this panel on this issue. When so you talk about, you about our attitude to people on low incomes, this is why uh, in introducing the national living wage we will, across the course of this Parliament, have increased income for those the lowest level of incomes by nearly 50% because we want those it's people to earn it's a better living. It's not enough on the base level that none of the Tory government seem to be on, the base level of how people are living day to day, trying to feed their children, what? trying to clothe them, trying to decide whether to get a school jumper or actually have a tooth taken out of the dentist. Oh, thought, this is the reality okay. of let, life. Uh, let me take okay. one more point from the man on the front here in, red, in the red shirt. You, sir. I just want to respond on what the uh, previous speaker has said. Uh, it has, uh, uh, universal credit has uh, a very sinister uh, element to it. The second week is not there for, uh, just by chance. It's to force people to go back, to, to, to go to work on a low pay way, unsecure uh, uh, a job. So that is the reason why Chris is saying that, oh, we have a reduction on the, on the claimant because face being faced with second week without money, without uh, um, income to actually feed your family or to pay for your rent, people will take any job that they All actually right. Offered to them, and unless they That's take the it, they, they lose all their so, benefits. Sal Brinton, on that very point, you said you're in favour of universal credit. Do you agree with him that the six weeks is designed to force people into a job? Is that not how that, you see it? That's not how I see it. And I think the, the, the reason, the principle about simplifying benefits is the right idea because before we had problems with when you're going to the council to get your housing benefits sorted or your rent paid, and you were also having to talk to DWP. So those are fine. It's the technical way that this is working. And you are right, sir. The, the, I can remember the Conservatives talking about we need a benefit that will make work pay. This does not make work pay. It's become infinitely worse. And a lot of that is because of the timing issue. Um, one and a half million people are, who are uh, with private landlords will not have housing associations or council landlords who can afford the time not to do something if, they, if, they, if rent, people get into rent arrears. Um, and it is important that we resolve those before there's any further All right. pilots. All right. We must, we must move on. Um, uh, we've got a number of other questions to come to.